In cell segmentation, we're going to use the intensity of an image to segment out cells. We'll then use Fiji to quantify different aspects of each of the individual cells and the cells as a whole in the image. Activity 7 is the first step in cell segmentation where we create two masks to use later on in the analysis. The cell segmentation activity uh, can get very complicated, there are lots of different steps, so I advise that you follow the sheets as best as you can. Um, I'm going to take you through the steps just now. So we want to be in the segmentation folder, and we're going to open up cell.tiff. Okay, so well, the first thing we want to do is to duplicate this image. So I'm just right-clicking, hitting duplicate. That name is fine, so we can click OK. Uh, let's just tile these. Okay, so in the first one, uh, first thing we're going to do is to find the peak of each of these cells. So the nice thing about this stain is it's very strong in the nuclei, so it allows us to identify, hopefully, one point per nucleus. So to do that, we're going to process find maxima, and here we've got a prominence value which basically equates to something like intensity. If we hit preview point selection it would show you what it's found so far. You can play around with the numbers here, but the magic number that you want is something like 400. So in this case you should find that most nuclei have only one point sitting within them. Uh, the key thing about setting up this type of automated analysis is you will not get it 100% correct. Uh, so for example over here there's a couple of nuclei and there's only one point. Uh, over here there's no nuclei. Um, if you can get it as close to 100% as possible then that's probably about as, as well as you can do. Okay, uh, in this case we don't want to output the Point selection, what we're going to do is something called segmented particles. So in this case, it's going to try and draw a line and a gap in between each of these cells. Okay, so we click OK, and it provides us with something like this. We are going to save that as mask1.tiff. So file, save as tiff. Mask one dot if. Okay, on our second copy of it, what we're looking to do is to identify the regions where the cell bodies sit. So we don't want to highlight the background, we want to just show where the cells are actually sitting in the image. So to do that, we're going to use an inclusive threshold. So image adjust threshold. Again, you can use the over and under for this if you want. Uh, the magic number I've got written in the instructions is 388, which looks something like this. So again, we're highlighting where the cells are and not trying to highlight the, the background. Okay. Down at this point, hit apply. There's a lot of rough edges and extra little bits going on here that's going to complicate the analysis. So we're going to clean that up a bit by using a process smooth or control shift S. You can see that's got rid of some of that um, finer detail. And now at this point, we can hit apply. So what we've got, uh, just let me sorry, save that. mask 2. So in this case we've got mask 1 which is showing the gaps in between the cells and mask 2 which is showing the kind of footprint of the cells where they sit within the, within the image. Next thing we want to do is try and combine those two functions together.
In the second part of cell segmentation activity 7, we'll combine the mass we've created and use those to read out quantitative data on an image. So to combine these two mass together, we're going to use one of the mathematical functions. Uh, that's it's under process, image calculator. And what we're going to do is a mask one and, not add, A-N-D, and mask two. So we want to highlight where the cells are and also the gaps in between the, the cells. So this will again separate out the cells, but here we're showing just the footprint of the cells. Now if we click OK, we're getting this, which is looking a little bit more like a segmentation of our original data. Now again, we're going to clean it up. We've got a few little pieces in here, and we can use the Analyze Particles tool to filter that out. So in this case, let's filter from anything smaller than 250 pixels squared to infinity. We're going to exclude on edges. We don't want to show any results at this point. We're just filtering it out, and then we're going to create a new mask after this. If we click OK. We can see we've now got rid of anything that's touching the edges. So for our area readouts, we should be fine. Uh, but there's something a bit weird happened to the uh, the look of this, and so now our lookup table has been inverted. Um, and this happens when you use the analyze particles. All we need to do is go into the lookup table menu and hit invert lookup table. Okay, so that looks better. Background is black. What we're selecting is white. Uh, the other thing we've got is a couple of cells in here have got little holes in them, so we want to fill those in. So we want to measure the hole of the cell. And we're going to go to Process Binary Fill Holes to do that. Hopefully you'll see those holes have disappeared. So this is finally our final mask saying these are our cells, these are the regions that we want to analyze. Let's save this as mask 3. And then finally, we can go on and actually analyze the data. So I'm going to get rid of all of the previous steps. So we just have mask3 and that cell.tiff image open. And what we're going to do is use the mask to say this is where we would normally, uh, this is where we want to analyze, but we actually want to read out the data from this image. Now, normally you wouldn't quantify the same image you've used to segment. That's not a good way of doing things, but we're going to use this in this case. Okay, so how do we do that? How do we use the mask to actually analyze on a real image? So we're going to go to Analyze, Set Measurements, and set the readouts that we want. So in this case, we're going to Area, Shape to Scriptures, Integrated Density, Mean Gray Value, Let's go with perimeter, ferrets diameter, and display label. We don't want limit to threshold, but we want to redirect it back to the cell.tiff image. So we're saying use this binary mask, but redirect the measurements back to cell.tiff. So hit OK. Make sure we've still got our mask selected. We can then go back to analyze particles. Again, we can use the 250 to infinity. In this case, we want to show outlines. And we want to display results, clear any old results, and also summarize. We've got exclude on edges selected there, but that's already been cleaned out. Uh, you could also use add to region of interest manager if you wanted to go in and manually clean out some of the, the data as well. Um, in this case, we'll hit OK. And now we've got our outlines showing all of the cells that have been identified. Our summary showing that there's 368 cells and these are the total or average statistics. And then also you have those measurements for each of those 368 cells. And again, we can save both the tables as a CSV file and the outlines as a TIFF file.